Our scripture this Easter morning comes from the book of Acts, beginning of the 10th chapter of the 34th verse. Hear now these words. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. For God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. May God add his blessings to the reading of his word. A teacher, Michelle Hardy, was sharing a time that she was teaching Sunday school class, a group of kindergartners, and she was teaching the creation story. And after spending several weeks on them, she wanted to see how much they had learned. So she was going over one Sunday morning in class what happened on each day. And so she said, what did God make the first day? And they all got the answer right. And then she asked, what did God make on the second day? And they all got the answer right. And then she got to, and what happened on the third day? And there was a little pause there as they were thinking. And finally, one little child beamed up and said, he rose from the dead on the third day. And while he wasn't quite right in the creation story, he kind of got the creation story right. Because on the third day after Christ was crucified, he rose from the dead and ushered in the new creation which we celebrate today. This is that wonderful day that we remember God set aside the old and embarked on a new creation that is still yet to be completely fulfilled. That new kingdom that is created for all. This is why Paul writes to the Gentiles, or the Gent, not the Gentiles, the Gast. Uh, Already got, got up too early this morning. That's <laughs> why he writes to the Galatians. Neither circumcision nor uncircumcision means anything. What counts is a new creation. In Christ we become new creations. And that is what is so wonderful about Easter. It ushered in a new hope for all. Not just a few select people. But it ushered in a hope for everyone. This is a hope regardless of who your ancestors were, where you were born, how much money you had, what race you are, what circumstances, nothing matters. This hope is for you. Paul put it this way to the Corinthians in his second letter. He said, so from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. That's a powerful thing that Paul was talking about. That last remark is a crucial one. For all the new believers and still for us today, we are messengers of the good news. And we are messengers of that reconciliation, that God is reconciling us one to each other and one to Him. And that's the news that we've got to, to have been spreading all down these years. But the problem is, we like to go from messenger to gatekeeper. 
You ever think about that? Because once we're in, we want to feel like this place is special. So for it to be special, somebody has to be excluded. We get that crazy kind of thing that I, if I belong here, I want someone who doesn't belong because they've accepted me. So my God, it's just, you know. And I don't know why we do that. But we want to feel like we've got to exclude people for it to be special. That wanting to belong is that sense that everybody's there. And this time of year is a kind of really special for a lot of high school seniors. Some already know where they're going this next fall, and others are just receiving those news. See, it's a time of year where they sit around waiting for that letter. I guess they don't do it in a letter anymore. You can log online to your thing, and you can sit there on the computer screen and see, did you get into the college you want? Am I in? Am I one of the ones who has been selected? Did I measure up? It can be a nerve-wracking experience for some. And shortly after Christ's ascensions, the disciples struggled with the same thing, kind of who's in and who's out. And our lesson from Acts this morning is God working on Peter and his perception of Easter. Is it for all or is it only for a few select? See, Peter and the disciples, they kept going back to their old teaching that Christ was a Jew, and it was only for the Jews that Christ had come, Christ had died for, not for the Gentiles. And so to understand this passage fully, we need to kind of back up a little bit from what we heard this morning. Peter is at the house of a person named Simon the Tanner, and he's up on the roof deck, and he's up there praying. And while he's up there praying, he has this vision of this huge tablecloth that comes down with food all over the place on it. The only problem is all the food, the food has come from unclean animals. And Peter hears a voice saying, get up and eat. And Peter, the good Jew, says, there ain't no way I'm going to eat that impure stuff. Well, Peter's kind of thick-headed, so this vision has to be repeated two more times. Three times Peter sees this vision come down. Three times he hears that voice, rise up and eat. And three times he says, I will not eat anything impure. And each time God says, why are you calling impure what I have made pure? And as soon as this comes down, these men come from Cornelius' house. And they're searching for this man named Peter, who used to be called Simon. And Peter hears a voice in his dream that says, go with these men. And so Peter goes with these men to Cornelius' house, these Gentiles, and when he arrives there, he finds a group of believers praising God, and he's amazed at it. And so for Peter, the idea that he's found believing Gentiles would be an oxymoron to him. How can you have a believing Gentile, because that's impossible, yet here they are praising God, almost speaking in tongues. And he's trying to figure this out. And he finally realizes that, yes, God has given us Christ for everyone. See, he, along with all the other Jews, had forgotten why they were created as a special nation. They were to be a priesthood. See, when God called them in Mount Sinai and gave them the law... God said, you will be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. And to be a priest means that you needed people to be a priest too. They were to be a priest to the holy nations. And Peter would finally figure this out this day of seeing that God came for all. And in his letter, he would write later, to all the people, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. And so as I said, when Peter encountered Cornelius' home and he sees these people, he says, now I realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Peter saw that God will respond to all who believe. And that hope is so powerful that even the darkest places cannot extinguish that hope. Even in the places where 
Christ is put down totally. It cannot extinguish that hope. Gary Thomas in Christianity Today years ago wrote about an event then Vice President George Bush attended. He attended the funeral for former Soviet leader Leonard, Leonid, Leonid Brezhnev. As Vice President, you get sent to all the funerals. And he has, while he's standing there, he noticed something. He noticed Brezhnev's widow did the ultimate protest in that country. She stood silently by his casket until the very end, and just as the soldiers came to touch the casket to close it, Brezhnev widow went up, approached the casket, and made a sign of the cross on her husband's chest. She defied everything he stood for. There in the citadel of secular, atheistic power, the wife of the man who had run it hoped that her husband was wrong. She hoped that there was another life and that that life was best represented by Jesus who died on the cross and that same Jesus might yet have mercy on her husband. See, Easter tells us that there is an answer to the question of death and the answer, that alternative is available to all. The hope of a new life is available to all. And when Christ defeated death to usher in this new creation, he did it by breaking down barriers. And see, that's what Christ came to do to reconcile us. He had to break down the barriers that separate us. So when one says, if just these teachings of Jesus could be fulfilled, our world would be filled with peace. If we could see each other as Christ sees us. See, that is our job as believers, to break down these barriers by sharing the good news. And to break down barriers, you have to become vulnerable. <clears throat> vulnerable to yourself in front of others. But vulnerable the way Christ became vulnerable even unto death. You have to forget about my world and think about the world of the people you encounter. Patricia Miller is a former staff person and she wrote about a time that God had to get through to her. She shared a day where she was at work and she worked in the emergency room. She says, when you work in the emergency room, you learn to harden yourself to the pain all around you. And she said, after five years, it was taking my toll because I was putting blinders up and wasn't seeing the pain of the people. And she says, I was, a kind of, I was tired that day. And there's a woman who came in there, and she was taking the information for this young woman who had overdosed on drugs and attempted suicide. And she, she was getting the information from her mother, this girl's mother. And her mother had been woken up in the middle of the night and she was a wreck and she was barely speaking in a whisper. And she says, all I could think about, hurry up, just give me the information. And she said, just, she was short, she was whatever, and she finally got the form filled out and she went over to the copy machine to copy it. And she says, as I was copying it, I heard this voice in my heart said, you didn't even look at her. And it repeated, you didn't even look at her. She said, I felt his grief for her and for her daughter. She says, I bowed my head and I said, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm sorry. She went back to the front desk and she says, I sat down with this distraught woman and I covered her hands with mine. I looked in her eyes and with all the love of God could give me, I said, I care, don't give up. And she says, in that moment, this woman broke down in tears and began to share her life story with her, how this daughter of hers has caused her so much trouble and been a grief and she's worried about her and loved her and after she poured out all this thing she thanked me she said she thanked me the cold hearted one with no feelings she said my attitude changed that day Jesus came in to my workplace and broke down the barriers I had set up to keep him out See, we need to break down the barriers we have set up to keep Jesus out, to keep us from our neighbors, to keep us from our family, our friends. See, those barriers Jesus broke down are so that all may come and receive his grace. He died for all, not just a select few. 
And like Peter, we need to rid ourselves of these self-built barriers. And Peter remembered that total story there in this story. He recounted the whole story of how they had walked with him and they ate with him. And so to make ourselves available, we have to make ourselves vulnerable. Peter made himself vulnerable by walking into a Gentile home, something that he was later accused of violating the rules and would have to defend himself against. And when he shared why, the people rejoiced. We need to experience the power of Christ's resurrection today. This shouldn't be just an Easter celebration day. Don't let it be just an Easter celebration. Let it be a day we experience the power of the resurrection, the power that changes lives. See, someone said, you have been given a gift this day, and the gift you have been given is your life. What are you going to do with that gift God has given you? Are you going to share it or are you going to be a gatekeeper? Each of us has been given the gift of life and the giver of, and the giver of that gift calls us to use that life to share the good news with all, regardless of the barriers we find or constructed ourselves. Christ's death and resurrection was for all to receive. It's available to all, each one sitting here today. And if you've not made that choice, receive that gift of Christ today. Don't wait. Don't wait. You don't know what tomorrow brings. Christ died for you so that you might live life and live it abundant. And he wants you to share that with everyone you come into contact with. He wants to give you that peace, that hope for this life and that eternal joy that will never end. Receive it today. Let us pray. Oh, gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank you for all your blessings. And we most especially thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ who rose from the dead to defeat death, to defeat all darkness, that there is not a darkness in this world that can extinguish that light. Lord, help us to see that light so that we might know you are always with us and that we might know that since you're always with us, you will always watch over and guide us and lead us into hope eternal. And Lord, never let us shy away from sharing your good news. Help us to be vulnerable in sharing that good news so that people might see the truth in us, that we don't cover anything up. Help us to live this way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.